In this video today, I'll be going over how to get every single unlockable in Silent Hill 3. First things first is beginner mode. An easy way to unlock beginner mode would be to come to this part of the mall. I'd recommend doing this on easy mode as well. Apparently you can unlock beginner mode by playing on normal mode, but I personally have never been able to unlock it via normal mode, so I would recommend easy mode. You then want to let these closers kill you. Once you're dead, load a new game and keep on dying in that one spot. Sooner or later, if you keep on dying on easy mode, this message will eventually pop up. Beginner mode has been added to the extra options. When on, battles will be made even easier for the beginner. This mode is easier than action level easy. This can also be applied to in-play data. However, you cannot select beginner mode if you are playing at action level hard or above. Press L1 or R1 at the options screen to display extra options. Beginner mode changes nothing in the game apart from the rating you receive after ending. Now for the extreme difficulties, and the health bar. The reason why I'm going over them both at the same time is because they both go hand in hand. You can unlock extreme difficulty 1 and the life bar by simply beating the game on hard mode. And beating the game on extra new game does in fact count, so you can go on extra new game and use your unlockable items in order to unlock even more items. So you can unlock extreme 2 by beating extreme 1 on extra new game, and extreme 3 by beating extreme 2, and then extreme 4 by beating extreme 3, and so on and so forth. Soon after beating extreme 9, you will unlock extreme X which is the most intense difficulty in the game. Bullet Adjust can also be unlocked by beating the game on hard mode. However, it does not matter what difficulty you play on. Bullet Adjust times 2, 3, 4, and 5 can all be unlocked by beating the game on easy mode 5 times. And you can even use the UFO ending to help shorten your playthroughs. Now for the gold and silver pipes. In order to do this, you must be playing on extra new game. You must then come to this part of the map in the underpass. Then drop the steel pipe into the water here. However, you must not have the pipe equipped. Heather will say something rather funny if you try to drop it in while it's equipped. Will you drop the steel pipe into the pool? But I'm using it. I think I'll hold on to it after all. So yes, you need to have it unequipped, which I always thought was a funny little detail. With the unequipped, say yes to the prompt. you dropped? Was it this precious gold pipe? No, it was not, so you want to say no. Well then, was it this magnificent silver pipe? Again, the answer is no. Perhaps it was only this filthy steel pipe that you dropped. That's the one. Oh, I have finally found a truly honest man. In return, I will give you both the gold pipe and the silver pipe to keep. Silver pipe. How gorgeous. No stronger than the steel pipe, though. Good against vampires and werewolves. Gold pipe. Looks snazzy, but it's not strong at all. Well, maybe I can sell it. These pipes are no different than your regular pipe. They are simply novelty weapons. Next up is the unlimited submachine gun. Right at the very first save point in the game, you can find it right outside the window to the left. I got an unlimited submachine gun. Unlimited submachine gun. Fires unlimited rounds. No submachine gun bullets necessary. This is probably the best weapon in the entire game. Now in order to unlock the unlimited submachine gun, you must get a fighting kill on God. You can use firearms on God, but as long as you kill her with a melee weapon, you are good to go. Now for the beam saber and the flamethrower. You can unlock the beam saber by defeating more enemies by fighting than shooting, and you can unlock the flamethrower by defeating more enemies by shooting than fighting. However, once you unlock the beam saber or the flamethrower, its counterpart will automatically become unlocked by the third playthrough. What this basically means is that you will have both the flamethrower and the beam saber automatically unlocked by your third playthrough no matter what. So you don't really have to keep track on how many enemies you're killing. The beam saber will be cryptically hidden right here. What a weird doorknob. I bet I could, oof, take it off. I got a beam saber. Beam Saber, a sword shining with a strange force. A switch turns the blade off and on. When you first unlock this weapon, it will be this length. However, upon getting a 10 star ranking, it should become this long. The flamethrower is going to be located right here. I got a flamethrower. 
flamethrower, this thing will roast the bad guys, and I don't have to worry about fuel either. When you first get the flamethrower, it will be pitifully weak and not have very good range. However, once you get a 10 star ranking, it will become longer and more powerful. Now for this very interesting option down here, Extra Costume. Going over how to unlock every single extra costume in the game would make this video far too repetitive. So in the description will be all the codes you need to unlock every costume, along with how you would go about originally finding out those codes. However, I will go over the most interesting costumes in this video. First things first is Princess Heart. In order to unlock Princess Heart, you must simply beat Extra New Game. And upon doing so, the game will give you this code, Princess Heart. With that code, this new item will appear in your inventory. Transform Costume, it's a costume that changes into the magic girl, Princess Heart. Having the Princess Heart costume equipped will make the Heather Beam more powerful. Sexy beam. And speaking of the Heather Beam, let's go over how to unlock that very quickly. In order to unlock the Heather Beam, you must accumulate 333 or more kills. This can be done over multiple playthroughs, so you do not need to kill 333 monsters in just one playthrough. You can also use the unlimited submachine gun to help you with this task. Now for the Royal Flush costume, which is the costume that I'm currently wearing. You must come here in the chapel and solve the secret riddle. Your first clue is right here. There's a memo stuck in this book. A secret told before you awake the start of a new transformation. Your next clue is right over here. The first number is the Traveler to St. Ives. Your next clue is over here. The second number is the Hair Wear a Crown of Straw. The third clue is right over here. The third number is the King of Beasts and the Goddess of Harvests. Now over here. The fourth number is the representative of both Knight and Page. And now for the fifth number. The fifth number is Lapis Azuli or Turquoise. Now at the other side of this room, you will find the final clue. 14 buttons all told, therefore one is always two. And now to go over the solution. The first number is the Traveler to St. Ives. This is referring to a nursery rhyme that reads, As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man of seven wives. Every wife had seven sacks, every sack had seven cats, every cat had seven kits, its cat sacks wives, how many were going to St. Ives? And the answer is only the man is going to St. Ives. He never mentioned bringing the seven wives. The first number would be one, because only one person was going to St. Ives. The second number is the hair wear a crown of straw. This is a reference the March hair from Alice in Wonderland, and March is the third month, so the second number would be three. The third number is King of Beasts and Goddess of Harvests. King of Beasts is referring to the Leo zodiac sign, and Goddess of Harvests is referring to Virgo, and both of those signs share a month in August, and August is the eighth month, so the third number would be eight. The fourth number is representative of both Knight and Page. Historically speaking, there used to be a knight and page playing card in a tarot deck, and those cards were dropped in favor of the jack, which is the 11th playing card. The fourth number would be 11. The fifth number is lapis azuli or turquoise. Both the lapis azuli and turquoise can represent the month of December. So the fifth number is 12. 14 buttons all told, therefore one is always two. This basically means that every number needs to be written in a set of two. So instead of the code looking like this, it would look like this. And after inserting the code, you will finally get yourself the royal flush costume. Now for the God of Thunder costume. This is the only costume in the game that will give Heather tattoos. It's also the only costume to change her hair color and give her blood on her face. I would assume that this is most people's favorite costume. In order to unlock the God of Thunder costume, you must insert this code which reads Gangster Girl. And the original intended way to get this costume was to beat the game on Extreme X difficulty. And after completing the game on Extreme X difficulty, the game would prompt up the code to unlock the God of Thunder costume. And now for the final costume that I'll be going over in this video, the Golden Rooster costume. The original intended way to get this costume was to get a 10 star ranking. After getting the rank, the game will prompt up the code, Cockadoodle Doo. Luckily, you do not actually have to get a 10 star ranking in order to get this costume. All you have to do is simply insert the code above. Last but certainly not least is a costume for Douglas that you can unlock by pressing up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, circle, X, and then selecting any difficulty. Ah. Uh.
Heather, I need to speak with you. My name is Douglas Carter. I'm a detective. A detective? Really? Well, nice talking to you. Hold on. There's someone that wants to meet you. Just let me have an hour. No, half an hour of your time. My daddy always told me not to talk to strangers. This is very important. It's about your birth. I'm not interested. Are you still following me? Do I have to scream? Sorry. I'll wait here. Incredible. Well, that's all there is for the unlockables in this game. Thank you for watching.